Bitcoin is close to becoming worthless. Now, what's the Bitcoin? The Bitcoin's like rat poison. Yeah. Oh. The greatest scam in history. Let's get it. Bitcoin will go to fucking zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, you ungovernable misfits. I'm your host, Max. Everybody knows that Bitcoin is useless, worthless, and doomed to fail. But what if everyone's wrong? What if it's the system that is doomed to fail? Join me as I speak to some of the brightest people in the space and slither to the deepest, darkest depths of the Bitcoin rabbit hole. Welcome back to Pleb Miner Month. Today we speak to Mehdi Nasari about Lincoin Pool. It was on our radar as soon as they put PayNim support for payouts on the pool and John has been testing it out. It was really good speaking to Mehdi and learning more about Botty McBotface and some of the other features on Lincoin Pool. Today is Lincoin Pool's birthday so go ahead and follow them and give them a happy birthday message. Thank you to the team for pushing forward PayNims. I really do appreciate that. And thank you for taking the time to jump on the pod. I also want to say thank you to everyone who's been involved in Pleb Miner Month. That means everyone who's been contributing, sending in articles, jumping on pods, doing bite-sized Bitcoins, and also everyone who's been sending in messages, asking questions, retweeting. It really is amazing to see how this thing is growing. I recorded with John yesterday. We did a bit of a roundup of the month so far and also did the prize draws. So for everyone who's been entering the competitions for the S9, the hoodies, the Node Runners gear and the Seed Signer, make sure to check that one out. Before we start, I also want to say thank you to Foundation Devices, not only for sponsoring my show, but also for sponsoring Pleb Miner Month. Make sure to check daily on Twitter and ungovernablemisfits.com to make sure you catch one of those. If you haven't already seen one of these incredible devices, go to foundationdevices.com. If you'd like to buy one, you can use the code BITBYBIT to get $10 off. And if you have any questions about the passport, you can get those questions in and you can ask Bitcoin Q&A and Lily who will be coming on the show. Also, a big thank you to Fast Bitcoins. They are an exchange based in the Isle of Man. They have an incredible UX. And for those of you who don't want to listen, don't want to go no KYC and decide you want to give your information over, then you might as well make sure that it is with a company that can be trusted to do the right thing. They will do everything they can to keep you safe. And they're also here despite me continuing to shit on and slag off every KYC service out there. So thank you so much to them for supporting the show. It means a lot and it just goes to show that they are here for the right reasons. Check them out at fastbitcoins.com and if you have any questions about the trade-offs, please do ask me. I'll be happy to talk this through. Enjoy the show. It is amazing when it works. I've just ninja launched you, by the way. You did. You always do. I always do. It's great to have you on the pod. As I said, I'm sorry for being late. It's just been a bit of a crazy day of driving. You you were late, and I was an hour and 15 minutes early. (laughs) (laughs) I was the only on-time guy, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, well, uh, yeah, thanks for joining, and... We've got this mining month obviously kicking off. I'm sure John has given you a little bit of info on it. I came across a tweet that had gone out and saw that you guys were supporting PayNims. And honestly, that was the only thing I'd ever heard from this pool. And I was like, fuck, can we get these guys on? This is awesome. Since then, I've been looking in a little bit more and pretty impressed with what you guys are doing. So I'm really looking forward to getting into it and learning a bit more about why you set the thing up. Sure thing. Yeah, absolutely. Thank, thanks for having me, first of all. And yeah, we, we have been doing a lot and we have a lot to be done on our roadmap. So 
I would be happy to discuss those over this podcast and 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 like uh, introduce this, this product and the technologies that we're building around it uh, to to more plebs. Before we sort of jump into Medi, can we talk a bit about why you're here and why you're doing something as fucking cool as getting Paynims involved? There's not many Bitcoiners that are doing this kind of stuff. Uh, like, yeah. how did you get into this? Okay, so we, we got to go back to many years ago. Uh, it was 2015. Uh, I was one, like, nerd guy. I was At the time, I was at graduate school. And the first Bitcoin ATM in the world was installed in Vancouver. I thought, hey, what's, what's this thing? How cool is it? I started buying Bitcoin from that ATM. And, well, it was just a hobby for me. Until the day that I went on a backpacking trip in Latin America. Uh, I, I remember I was in Nicaragua on an island, a volcanic island named Ometepe. And uh, we were staying at a hostel, like a farm hostel. And uh, I saw that, that there, was a, there was a sign there saying that Bitcoin is accepted here. Wow. How come? Like we are in the middle of nowhere, literally in the middle of nowhere. How, how are these guys doing that? I started talking to the receptionist. Hey, do you actually accept Bitcoin? I said, well, we have the sign. We haven't done it yet, but sure, we do. And uh, said, let's give it a try. And I paid for my for my hostel. It was at, at the price today. It, it cost me like around ten thousand dollars or whatever. But uh, <laughs> I made the payment. At the time, there was no QR codes or stuff. I mean, I know the technology was there, but they only had like the address. I had to type that in. And uh, I made the payment. And at that moment. I thought something changed in me, right? So I said, hey, I just transacted with these guys without requiring to trust them, without having any intermediary involved. And I just I just at that moment I thought this is gonna be the future. And I gotta do something about it. And I was I was one of those nerdy guys that invents something new every morning, right? So I said, okay, <laughs> let's let's invent something about Bitcoin. Let's do something about Bitcoin. Well, at that, I mean, I started learning more. I came back from that trip. My heart stayed in Ometepe and in Nicaragua. Uh, but uh, I started learning. A buddy of mine who, who is now uh, helping me with this company, he's, he's our CTO, Mustafa. We started learning different topics about Bitcoin, how the infrastructure works, what is mining, what is blockchain, all this stuff. And we started building around it. It was 2020 that we officially started uh, this company uh, in order to build a product for Bitcoin miners. And we still had a lot to learn and a lot to build. But over the course of one year, we built our first product. It was about around like uh, November, December 2020 that we launched the alpha version of the product. And uh, March 2021, we launched the beta version. You can't imagine how bad it was, right? <laughs> all the bugs, all the issues. <laughs> but eventually, it was September last year, September 7th, on Bitcoin Day, the day that Venezuela, I mean, uh, El Salvador announced that they are adopting Bitcoin. They're starting like having 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 bitcoin as legal tender on that same day we launched our product publicly we had some small miners but he said okay here's the product now we should bring miners in and started doing the marketing talking to people telling them about our vision our mission and some people took the risk to actually come on board we are really grateful to them right a new product you you have no idea who are these guys but they trusted us and they joined the platform. And from that moment, we started to grow. It is worth mentioning that we, as miners, we didn't have any miners. We only had one T9, one S9. We still have them. And those are being used for our testing purposes. But we didn't have any, any large operations ourselves. We were like pure plebs, if, if you want to call it that way. So we started from the, there. We started growing. And people started joining the platform and 
we receive really, really great feedback from them that, hey, this is, this is something, well, the, the product was, was crappy, I would say, at that time. Minimal features, but they said, hey, we'd like the UX and you guys got to build on top of that and like make this, make this a great product. And that was a great motivation for us. We started building and building and building. It was around April, April this year that we, we got to the point that we could claim that Lincoln is now the leading product in the market. We know that we have already included every feature and we have we have the best features in the market and we kept growing and growing and growing and we are where we are now. We have around like, well, that's, that's not much, but it's honest work, around like 200 to 250 petahash, all from PLEPS or mining through Lincoln. Very nice. And John, I know you've been playing around with some of the features and uh, you were telling me about a Telegram bot and some other different bits as well. Yeah, so far I've I've been testing out Lincoin Pool for about two weeks and I really like the interface. I really like like the customer support. You know, Mehdi and and, and his team are on that Telegram group all the time. Any question you have, they're available to you. He's kind of building like a family atmosphere over there. Uh, it's pretty light on the Telegram group. A joke around. Um, I, I'm really enjoying it. The interface, the UX is really clean. So far, monitoring on the miners has been good. I'm I'm very pleased. You certainly are building quite a team over there and a great product. Thank you, thank you. I'm I'm happy to hear that. Something that you mentioned, and uh, I just want to just uh, some elaborate some more on that. Since we started this, we thought that okay, we don't have money. At least let's be nice. So, <laughs> uh, so that's that's basically what we decided to do. Let's let's build a community around this product. Let's let's have have the right culture in our community for people to be there to enjoy being there and be supportive of, of each other. And mm. as soon as you go on our Telegram group, and you'll 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 feel that you'll see that most of these people who you are referring to that. They have been supporting you. They're not. They are not affiliated with us. They're just our users, and they are there to support everybody else to succeed. And that's that's how we are growing. The power of community, the power mm. of the culture, the right culture in the community, and that's that's what, what we love. I mean, that's that's a great motivation. Every morning that we wake up, we have something. We have a reason to actually keep building. I love that. Well, that really is what this Pleb Mining Month is about. It's getting the plebs together, getting them to learn from each other, help each other, and they've all got different skills and different abilities. It's really nice to see that. Like, It's a grassroots thing, and we want to see more plebs getting involved in the mining. And if you have helpful support teams, it makes all the difference. Absolutely. John, what else uh, have you found from playing around with it? Any features and things that are of interest? As you know, I've not played around with it. I haven't got any home miners yet, but I will be forced to at the end of the month. So what's this Telegram bot you were talking to me about? Well, that that has a that has a pretty nice story behind it. So one of one of the features that we had on the pool from day one was a Telegram bot that people could use to interact with the pool. Well, we had it for a while, but at some point that we started adding more intelligence into it, we thought that, hey, this guy needs a name. And we even to the community and said, hey, this is the bot you've been using for a while, but now let's come up with a name for it. And ask people to to suggest names for it. Like, well, at the time we said, okay, let's let's come up with a name like like a rock star or superhero, something like that. But we started getting like some funny names. And <laughs> at the beginning, we were like, wow, are we going to really name this spot? These, any, any of these suggestions? I mean, are we going to use any of those? And uh, well, out of all the names, the name Butty McButtface was selected by the community. <laughs> And uh, it was it was actually based on based on a story about a boat being named by a city, yeah, named Boaty McBoatface. 
Yes. But they said, let's use the same framework to, <laughs> to name this spot. Bati Makwat face was born. Do you know the difference? What's the difference? The difference is that you actually stuck to it and allowed the community to actually name the boat. I know about mm-hmm. this because it happened in the UK. And okay. they put it out to the general public saying, what do you want to name the boat? I'm not sure if it was military or what it was for, but it was British public were going to vote on it. And the British public, being the British public, came up with something fucking stupid, and that was Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> but they didn't name it that. They went with something else. But you guys right. did. So that's that's right. quality. <laughs> yeah, and, and we, we actually, at that moment, we totally felt that something changed. The intimacy that people had with the product was boosted from that day. And people thought, hey, we are, we are actually contributing in building this, this community, building this product, in building all, all the things around it. And we, we, are, we are really happy that we, we received those suggestions and we followed uh, what, what is asked by our community. And, and we are now seeing the result. People, people are loving it. Yeah, something unique about Butty Mac Buttface. Well, it is basically a bot that helps you maintain your hash rate. Tells you if anything goes wrong, you can ask it about what are what are like the faulty machines or what is my average hash rate, things like that. It is also really good in telling dad jokes. And I, <laughs> well, whenever you feel like we uh, feel like tired or whatever, you can ask for a joke and it will through you the worst joke you have ever heard. Like <laughs> not funny at all. So <laughs> that's a feature. Are you on the chat now? Which chat? On uh, oh, can the, you the use? one, yeah. Let me. Can we have a dad joke? I want to get a body McBot face joke. Yeah, here. I want to experience this. These are world class. Tell a joke. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? I don't. Come know. on, Max. I don't. Ten know. tickles. <laughs> Ten. T- <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. All right. What, That's what a real value one... add. It is. Yeah. <laughs> what, what What did one wall say to the other? I'll meet I you at the know. corner. <laughs> as, you, oh, as you'd say max good quality that is good quality i like that <laughs> i'm just writing those down to use later <laughs> well start start mining on link coin pool and uh you can have access to it too yeah it's a value it's, a, it's not just a value add for mining but a value add for your life exactly it's a lifestyle thing yeah <laughs> that's good so um so you said you've obviously been growing quite quickly do you think that's just something from within the community people are sort of dipping their toes in to start and then bringing more and more hash online or like how are you bringing people in is there any sort of advertising or like it's a kind of new world to me so i don't know how these things kind of happen yeah so we are a pretty small team in the startup world they call it a pre-seed team so we, we haven't raised any funding or whatever. It's, it's all bootstrapped and it's, it's all like being developed with the, with the revenue that we're generating through, through uh, like offering services to our miners. So we don't have much budget for marketing and we don't do much, much marketing. It's all the network effect, which is bringing people in. And well, and there is another driver for our growth, which is innovation. Well, we believe mining pool industry has a state in 2015. No innovation is happening. Well, people are trying, but we think that there is a lot of room for improvement and for advancement. And that we are, we are actually doing that. We are building a new, new features, new tools every day. We are building at a greater speed. And that's kind of the main driver or one of the main drivers for our growth. I mean, product innovation... And the network effect from the community is how this product is, is, is growing. Yeah. Well, like I said, the one that really jumped out to me, being someone who's heavily interested in privacy, to see that PayNIMS were being included, incorporated into this, was really, really exciting. Because it's something I've asked people for a long time, like, isn't it a pain in the ass to just have to go in and keep changing manually the addresses? And, you know, some people do that and they manually change every time. Other people I know just say, oh, I'll just keep it as the same. I just reuse the address. And I'm like, well, that's pretty basic 101 stuff not to do. 
I kind of felt like something should be built in to stop people from doing that. And Bit47 and PayNIMS is something that not many bits of software are using it. Obviously, Samurai have got it and Sparrow. But outside of that, like I've not really seen anyone jump on board and start using this. So it was really exciting personally for me to see that. And it made me think, this is actually innovation. This is actually something moving forward that people need. So yeah, I mean, this thing, Bip47 has been out there for many years. But well, no, I mean, and it has been adopted by, by wallets, as you said, Samurai and Sparrow Wallet, but no platform had actually adopted it. So no one was offering that solution for people to actually use their Samurai Wallet with it. And we thought, let's let's do something about it. And the problem, the biggest problem for this was that there was there was no source code for it out there. Like in, in many projects, the software developer is trained to go find the right code, copy and paste, and build around it. But specifically for BIP47, there was not many resources out there, and we had to build from scratch. Just imagine how much testing should have been done for for a new code like that was that was built from scratch, and we we did it, and we were we were pretty happy with the outcome, and it was really well received by the community, and well. I mean, just as an example, you heard about us through Paynim, right? So we, we are pretty happy that we implemented that. And we think that we are contributing to, to the advancement of this industry, especially for small and medium scale miners who care a lot about their privacy. Mm-hmm. This was a key feature and, and a new advancement for us. Yeah, and that's something we appreciate here, you know, as we're celebrating Pleb Miner Month giving the resources, you know, small scale and home miners that they need. It's really appreciated, like from our vantage point that we can use a Paynim. I initially saw that tweet. I think Diverter had sent it out first saying that you guys were the the first one to um, to use Paynims. And then Max saw it and I saw it. And and that really was the the impetus for us contacting you and me getting on Linkcoin pool was the Paynim. And then it's like, come for the Paynim and stay for the other advantages that the pool has. Um, so if somebody is, starts mining with, with Linkcoin Pool and they want to pay out in a Paynim, how do they set that up on the pool itself? So something about Paynims is that you have to create a payment channel between the payer and the pay. So in order to establish that channel, you got to send a transaction on the network on chain in order to make that decentralized. So... If anybody wants to start using Paynim, they have to start mining, accumulate some some Bitcoin, like they, they, they'll need 20,000 sats. And with that 20,000 sats, they can initiate the channel. And once the channel is established, we will start paying them through that Paynim every time that we are sending them out a payout. And the payouts on Linkcoin pool, there, there are two different methods. One is the instant or quick withdrawal the other one is automated withdrawal for the quick withdrawal you can you can request the payout any moment during the day 24 7 and that's going to be sent to your pay name as as we talked about the other one the automated withdrawal you can set time triggers and thresholds to be paid on a daily weekly or monthly basis and again that payout is also going to go to your pay name or bip 47 payment code so that's that's how it works. We have tried to make it as simple as possible in terms of UX, and people people have been quite happy with it. How, what was your experience, John? How 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 was it for you? I found it to be pretty painless. I I had more of an issue with my uh, Electrum server <laughs> setting up the okay. the pay name than I did anything else. Um, it took me a second to realize the the twenty thousand sat. A fee, I, I guess, to to establish the channel. But but once I kind of understood that, it, it was pretty simple. Um, is, is there a threshold for the instantaneous payout? And do you have a threshold for the, the scheduled payout? Uh, the threshold, well, it's, it's 100,000 sats. So that's that's the threshold. I mean, suggested threshold that we ask people to to use for their payouts. That's a pretty, that's a pretty low threshold. And yeah. that's helpful to a lot of small-scale miners to have such a low threshold. Exactly, exactly. John, did you use uh, Samurai for that or Sparrow? I used Sparrow for that. 
It's very interesting. It's like we were saying, this is for the pleb miners. And I think like a, a lot of the pleb miners, especially the ones in Europe, this is something that is done. A lot of people are doing this for privacy because the energy rates are so high here. It makes it very, very difficult to be competitive. So the people who are mining, um, they're having to have all these extra steps they've got to think about. And to have this integrated is just... Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really clean. I really like it. And um, I've been pretty surprised to see that no one else has integrated it outside of Craig. And um, it seems like I've, I've asked a few people and they always just say, oh, it's very difficult. Like we do want to do it, but it's too, it's too hard to do for X, Y, Z reason. Are they bullshitting or did you have to work really hard on this? Well, it wasn't easy, I would say. Okay. We, we got it done in a in a in a quite short time, it took us about like one month to implement, but that wasn't an easy process. You, you, we had to be creative around like the protocol. We had to be innovative on the on the code and the infrastructure. So, I I don't expect this to grow very fast. But based on the feedback that we have got from our community, we think that it is going to be adopted by more and more platforms as we forward mm. yeah something something that we like about it is that as you said people don't actually have to do their like updated address every time and we are we are implementing the same mindset everywhere throughout our product so basically we have a slogan saying that we are here to make bitcoin mining boring like people are, people are trying to make it exciting but we are trying to make it boring you just set it and forget it right you make it a passive income you just set it well and everything else is going to be done by the platform and that's how, that's how how we are trying to actually implement the same mindset in in like device monitoring payouts management and things like that so Meta, you had said that there there was no source code out there to implement the paynim structure and that you guys built it from scratch. Would you be willing to share like how open source is that with with other pools or other organizations that want to set up that kind of paynim payout structure? Or are you keeping that all proprietary? Absolutely. Shorting, that's that's something that we believe should be shared, but for a new new product and new code, there are there are some risks to do so. So just imagine if there is a bug in the code that we have and we just put it out there and it's going to be used by some some bad guy to actually take advantage from it. That's that's not something that we want to happen. So before releasing the code, we just want to make sure that it's it's tested for a while and it's it's actually reliable to be out there. So for sure that's something that is that is going to happen. Did you guys coordinate all with uh, Craig Raw or the Sparrow team or the Samurai team on building that particular functionality of Linkcoin Pool? Mm, no, we didn't have any any like communication channel between us. But their GitHub and their their like open source code was pretty helpful to understand the procedures and how they have implemented it. So we 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 used their their code, which was mostly in Java or I'm not sure what what was the other one. Uh, but we we learned a lot from from their code. It kind of really dis displays the the importance of keeping everything free and open source, and and the power that that actually has. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's all about this crypto. I mean, this Bitcoin community, right? From day one, everything has been open source. All the procedures that we have for releasing beeps and uh, people just see, comment, help you promote and develop that code, and uh, then it is adopted. And that's that's the same thing in the entire community. So at the moment, your code for this is closed source, or you're you're not sharing that while you're working out bugs. But is that something that you will? share with certain developers to get some more eyes on it and then release or do you have like a a plan for that so just 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 to clarify something the code and how it works it has already been implemented by samurai and sparrow both of them are open source so if anybody needs those the code is already there so 
first of all that side about what we have done yeah we we have the we have written our own code in our preferred language and we are sharing that with other devs like internally without like pub i mean i mean not publicly and once we are we are sure about how it works and about like all the features the security of code that's something that is going to be published as as an open source code okay that's huge cool. kudos yeah. to you guys that's very cool yeah no i just wondered in in the meantime like uh, whether you would have a step between having the internal the like people who are internal viewing the code and making sure they're comfortable with it before releasing i wondered if there might be a, a second step before the full release which would be to speak to samurai or speak to craig and say do you want to cast your eye over this and and just can you give me some thoughts and feedback like kind of i guess trusted plebs trusted members of the community who um you're not worried about uh them fucking you over have kind of experience with this sure thing yeah i mean well as i said i we didn't know them basically in in, mm. in real life i mean but the moment that we announced this we we got pretty good support from them and from their community and we think that's that's something that should happen this collaboration should happen mm. in order to serve the users better so that's for sure something that is going to happen awesome I'm going to have to set up a pod and get the three of you together. Sure thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would be a good listen. I know that these guys will just be, there'll be a huge amount of excitement from them because I know Samurai have been like banging their head for so long. Like, come on, someone adopt this. Come on. Like all the communities, like fucking hell. And then Craig obviously jumped on board and there was a massive amount of support there. And, you know, with what you guys are doing, it's going to be the same. So I'm sure they would uh, help in any way possible. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that would be a big part of the Bitcoin standard, which is which is which we believe is going to happen in the coming years. So just imagine how many people are going to set up these payment channels like every employer who is paying their employees, every payer who is paying their pays. They'll need something similar if they are, they want to transact on layer one of Bitcoin, or those that are seeking donations for causes. Exactly. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole people, Hong Kong model thing really could have been avoided with with a paynem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. People are, are uncomfortable sending sending pay, sending Bitcoin to a public address, right? Because you kind of can be traced and tracked for for many different reasons. You don't want to be be that that public right yeah absolutely like you say a lot of that could have been avoided the privacy guys have been shouting this from the rooftops for years and years and a lot of people just don't want to pay attention and then you have a real world situation a situation where bitcoin is actually needed by people on the ground and the ball is fumbled because people are too lax and they don't take care about these sort of things. And, um, you know, this is, a, I guess, that pleb culture and especially in the mining community. And what we're trying to do here is really to think deeply about how you do these setups, making sure that people are running VPNs when they're mining at home, making sure that they're thinking about pay NIMS and thinking about ways to keep their data secure, stop themselves from becoming a target. And that's something that's not really possible for a lot of people outside of mining. A lot of people struggle to buy in cash. A lot of people are going to exchanges. And I guess within Bitcoin, I kind of see Bitcoin mining is almost a counterculture within Bitcoin where you have the sort of think boys and you have the number go up crowd and um, it's something that's growing and it's cool to see there's a platform that's trying to embrace that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's one of the one of the features, I think, for a lot of the pleb miners, a lot of the home miners is this is their avenue to get KYC resistant. I wouldn't know if KYC free is, is kind of a, a really a broad term, but at least mining is, it's a little easier to obfuscate what you're doing. And the pay mm. payout is really important for, for this, those small miners. Um, what other kind of tools do you have that are more tuned towards a small miner? Do you think that would make Linkcoin pool attractive to a small scale or home miner? So we identified one big issue in Bitcoin mining when we were building this product. 
well, we thought that people are, are missing out because of their downtimes. Every 15 minutes of downtime means that you are losing 1% of your revenue. And, well, there was not enough tools and there is not enough tools out there to let you know that, hey, you're, you're not hashing. I mean, for, for alerting purposes. So we built the entire infrastructure in a way that we, uh, that we wanted to make sure that we let, let miners know that if there is, if there is any issues, we'll let them know in less than five minutes. So if there is a problem with the machine, is, is it a disconnection or is it a hash rate drop for every single miner separately? We let them know in less than five minutes, and that's where Buddy Mac what face comes into play. I mean, we also send alerts through email or through the mobile app, but that's something that we had in mind from day one to send out alerts for connections, for disconnections, for hash rate drops, and we think this is a game changer for miners, especially for home miners who who can't afford losing a lot. You can't now. Just tell you a little story from yesterday. We had a big lightning storm, and I decided it's time to disconnect my machines from power. And I went down there, and it was almost instantaneous. That body McBot face had informed me that my machines were off. Which machines were off? Because they're, they're not all on the same circuit. So I would turn about two off at the same time, wait a couple seconds, take two more off, wait a, a few minutes because I have to go somewhere else in, in the home, and then turn off the other two. And it was almost instantaneous for each one on Body McBot Face and the Linkcoin Pool app. And I also got emails as well. That's awesome. So you got them all. <laughs> Thank you for the load on our servers. So you you had <laughs> you're, you're you're quite welcome. I'm glad I signed up for all of those services. But it, you know, for notifications and banner notifications, and I don't know how you are with your phone, but I I don't see any of them. I don't notice them. They're mostly all silenced. Um, but I am on Telegram often, and I think a lot of other a lot of other Bitcoiners and miners are on Telegram. So Body McBotface was super convenient for that, and the details too. The you know which which miners are, you know how many miners came offline, and that's at least enough for a reminder you, for you to go into the app itself and get a little bit more details. Um, what kind of details are in in the app as far as like uh, worker management? So for the worker management, let me let me open it up because we have been adding a lot of features recently. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I noticed that. I, I think yeah. like a, a, re- a release came in for uh, iPhone, and you were like, "Oh, I didn't know that that was going to come out yet." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. We are we we have a lot of new features in the funnel that are that hasn't been released yet. But what we have live right now, so for every single machine, you can see the 10-minute uh, average hash rate, one-hour average hash rate, and 24-hour hash rate. You can see the reject rate. <clears throat> you can see the estimated daily revenue for that specific miner. You can see the estimated daily electricity consumption for that miner. So you can set the model, and uh, the, the panel will tell you how much does it cost to actually keep this machine going. So at some point you might decide that, hey, it's not worth it to keep it on. And you're just well, going on, on the average use um, from that particular model of machine? Exactly. That's the joule per tera hash or, or watt per tera hash. That's how we calculate that. And uh, we, are, we are adding more features around that. But uh, would, would, well, again, you know, each, each machine is of course, different. A lot of people will take measurements at the wall and look at their hash rate. Is there a custom entry for that, for your electricity consumption, or are you just picking from generic models and, and their their estimates? That's the actually a good suggestion. So we hadn't thought oh, about you. it. Yeah, we'll add it for you. <laughs> hey, thank so, you very no, much. Right? I appreciate it. <laughs> Business on there. <laughs> yeah. So right now we only have, have a list of well, pretty much all, all the machines out there. But as you said, the energy consumption for all of them is not the same because, I mean, the chip quality is different. So 
right now we don't support that, but that's something that we think should be added to the platform. So yeah, you you soon you will be able to add your own Gilbertera hash for each miner and see what's going on. Soon, TM. I mean that that's that's kind of the interesting part of the organization that you are is you're lean enough yeah. to make those kind of changes almost in real time. Yeah, we actually hate this soon TM thing, right? <laughs> Everybody does, right? <laughs> I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Yeah, we rather we rather talk about now TM because we think that. We already have some great features, and as you said, we are fast enough to to build features in a, in very very short time. I mean, if if a feature request comes our way, we usually have that feature implemented in a week or so. Let's get a timestamp on this. We're almost we're thirty nine minutes in in the bit by bit pod for Pleb Miner okay. Month with with Medi Nasiri, and you have already trademarked a new trademark now TM. Right here, right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, it's so official. For, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, other people have been using using that, so we are not infringing any trademarks here. <laughs> just, just no, saying we're, that. No, we're, we're crediting you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, uh, but again, I mean, we we hate keeping people waiting for something, so we rather actually release that and then announce that. So, as you said, one of our updates leaked last week that people. People learn that we are adding some new features about like the the hashboard temperatures and the fan speed stuff like that. We we were actually kind of kind of surprised and kind of sad that hey people are knowing about this now they are waiting for it, but it's not ready for release yet. So that's kind of a bad feeling for us. Not so, really. I mean, people <laughs> get that sense of sense of uh, you know they gotta have it now. Yeah, I mean, but but anyway, that's not gonna take too long. Uh, we sent out the all all the all the like new apps and stuff to our beta testers today to test those new features, and hopefully on on our birthday, which is gonna be next week, we are gonna to release a bunch of new updates for our pleb miners. Hmm, I've kind of made up the schedule for the first two weeks of. Uh, releases, but maybe we could do something with this pod if Max can edit it in time to uh, release at the same time possible. as your birth. Uh, yeah, <laughs> what was that date for your for your birthday, Matty? September seventh. September seventh. I'm writing that down, Max. I'll get it done. Matty, can you tell me how? And you don't have to go. You can go as deep as you want to, or or not. How your your app or or Linkcoin pool can monitor the hash board temps and the fan speeds of the machines. So what we will need, uh, we'll need uh, users to actually run an agent locally, which runs in the background on a on a like a Windows PC, on a Mac, on a Raspberry Pi, or any sort of platform, and that agent will be kind of the guy who overlooks everything, reads all the data, gather them, send them server to enable miners to actually monitor their entire operation through Linkcoin Pool platform. And we are also adding some some cool features to it. For example, it, it happens it happens very often that one of your your machines stops hashing for whatever reason. So this new update will automatically move forward, take action, reboot the miner when there is no hash rate coming toward the pool. So we kind of trying to automate those. And as I said, we are trying to make Bitcoin mining boring. So you guys could only like sit back, enjoy your movies, just from time to time check your app and see, yeah, everything is, is smooth and it is happening as it should. If you have anxiety and OCD, I'm, I'm t- that's impossible. <laughs> yeah, we, we try to, to solve that too. Maybe a new feature for Body Mac butt face would be, would be some, some sort of like... <laughs> Body Mac some, therapy face. Uh, yes, true. <laughs> Yeah, the other day we were discussing like adding food recipes or relationship advice as features to Body Mac Fat Face. Oh, but... relationship advice to, <laughs> to Bitcoiners. That's a really good idea. <laughs> we'll get lo- Love is Bitcoin involved. They can help yeah. out. Is that, that agent that you run locally, the software that will run on those machines, is that proprietary to you and is that a paid service? That's that's proprietary. So we have we have built that from scratch. And that's kind of included with, with the pool. So anybody can can have it installed and start using that right away while using Linkcoin pool. 
Wow. I, I was really expecting you to say, no, that's kind of on a more of a paid side. Well, it's it's too early for that. I mean, we, we don't uh-huh. like to yeah. become too greedy too fast, right? So we, we want to have it have it open for people to test it, to try it out, and help us grow. So that's that's the main reason. One one really cool feature that we are including into into this update is that we know that everybody have like a any desk or team viewer to do remote desktop to their like computers to check on their machines. We are actually adding a proxy tunnel to our platform that people can actually log in into the dashboard of their miners through the mining pool platform. So you'll see your your Ant miner dashboard or Watts miner dashboard right on the pool platform without being like at home or at your facility from that's really anywhere convenient. in the world. Yeah, that's that's a very convenient feature. Yeah, I mean, let let's see. I mean, it's it's still like seven seven days left until we publicly release that, or let's say publicly beta release that. But uh, so far, so good. I mean, we have received great feedback from the community about this new addition and this new feature, and we're excited about it. I kind of want to pivot to, and I think a lot of people don't understand this. Would you be able to describe to the audience? an FPPS payout system and a PPLNS payout system? Sure thing. So uh, PPLNS basically means pay per last N number of shares. Uh, That basically means whenever the mining pool successfully mines a block, they will distribute the rewards among the people who contributed in mining that block. So basically, the miners won't get paid until the mining pool has successfully found a block. And well, that that school that has been out there for for a very long time. Uh, but all the risk is shared between the pool and the miners, or basically, it's all on the miners, kind of, because they are the ones who are bringing bringing in the the proof of work. But what FPPS means. It means that the pool takes all the risk and pays miners to the maximum of their potential, to the maximum of their potential of winning a block with every submission that they make to the pool. So in that case, all the risk is on the mining pool side and the miners, they will see one steady payout. Practically, if you look out the rewards in a, in a big window, they are they should be equal because that's all about the probability of winning and all the chance stuff so they should be pretty similar and well quite close but practically when you are running an operation you can't forecast or predict when your machines are going to go off right for for any 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 reason like mm-hmm. because of like internet disconnection or or anything goes wrong with the electricity so that that makes it a bit unpopular from financial point of view that like PPLNS could actually kind of kind of damage your your revenue, but at the same time people people like it people like it because they say that hey this is this is exciting we see what's it, it, it going on it is on. exciting of watching pool luck and when you hit a double block and and just to let everybody know like for instance uh, slush pool soon to be brains pool is a PPLNS payout structure. And Linkcoin Pool is an FPPS payout structure. Um, but yeah, you do have that sense of excitement in when you're mining on, on Slush Pool, when they hit a double block and, and you see the, the pool luck is up really high. So there's a certain amount of excitement for that. But I can understand that as the more you scale up, that you don't want so much excitement that you want more stability in your payout structure. That's true. I mean, it, it's not about which one is better. Everybody might have their preferences. But in the meantime, in a big window, you're going to get paid the same through any of these two payment methods. Yeah, it all averages out. Now, typically, I used to understand it that the FPPS payout fees were a little bit higher. And then that was the trade-off be- between the PPLNS and, and the FPPS was, well, you're going to have a steady payout you know, on a pool like Linkcoin pool, but the fees are going to be higher. Are your fees typically higher? Well, 
Uh, you're, you're right. So typically people are charging more. For example, some pools are charging like 4%, 2.5% for FPPS, while PPL and S fees are around 2%. But I, I, I think that's not the case anymore. It used to be like that, but recently mm-hmm. we see that they're becoming closer. Or I, I've, I've been seeing this conversation going on home miners group on Telegram that people say it's not... FPPS, which is expensive, it's actually the PPLNS, which is expensive because there is no risk involved, so it should be much cheaper compared to FPPS. Yeah. But right now, the, the fees, I mean, are pretty similar these days, but we might see PPLNS fees go down sometime in the near future. How do you guys determine what fees you're going to charge? Just a profit and loss kind of calculation. Uh, that's that's actually hard hard to answer. So in in running any business, probably the main goal of any business is to maximize their revenue. So when you want to actually maximize your revenue, you have to evaluate the willingness to pay from your customers. Sure. And that pricing that's all about somehow similar to supply and demand or what what is the willingness to pay from the users that's what decides the fees to be so that's that's technically how how we say say that but well in in the real world the mining pool industry uh, there are there is there is there is a lot of competition out there it's a bloody red ocean right so you could go out start shopping around find your best fee and stick to the pool that charges you less. But at the same time, you won't get all the features and stuff that you, you'll get from any pool. Yeah, U, UX and UX is a very important part of it. Exactly. So the pool itself, I can say pretty much all the pools are as good as each other in terms of their pool side of business. But in terms of the tools, features, and UX that they are providing that's where the fee differences come into play. Can you kind of describe for us, so if I'm mining on Brains Pool and it hits a block and they sign that block, and then based on your hash rate contribution, say you were still mining while it was discovered, you get paid out from a percentage of that. But with your pools a little bit different, you guys aren't signing blocks, right? Not yet. Okay, so how exactly does one discover a block on your pool? So technically, we are we are part of a bigger consortium of pools that we share the nonce search area. So technically, people who are mining with us are contributing in finding a block, but the block that is being mined, because we are probably like a small player in that consortium, is not signed by our name. But soon that's going to be solved, and we're going to be signing our own blocks pretty pretty soon, as we expect to to keep growing. Can I but, just uh, jump in with it? Sorry, Mehdi. Can yeah, I just ahead. jump in with a bit of a retard question? Is it not better not to sign a block? Is it not better to be in some way anonymous? Or is it no matter what you do, it's still trackable? Anyway, you can be traced. Because when you are you're mining a block, there is a block reward and TX fees that are going to end up in a, in a valid address. And that valid address is associated with a pool or with a miner or whatever. So technically... What, what do you mean by valid address? So in, in every every block that is mined, there is a Coinbase transaction that mm-hmm. creates that 6.25 Bitcoin out of mm-hmm. thin air, right? And that 6.25 Bitcoin should end up somewhere. Mm-hmm. And that somewhere is the valid address of the mining pool or the miner who found that block. But why does that need to be linked to an identity? It it shouldn't, but people people actually bind that or keep reusing that address, that valid address, in order to increase the transparency of a pool operation. Aha, this is really what I'm getting at is... Understand now, yeah. Yeah, what is the benefit of doing that especially as we move into most probably an adversarial environment where 
I imagine a thumb is going to come down on mining pools at some point and they're going to start putting pressure. If there's no strategic advantage to doing it, why does everyone do it? Yeah, I mean, that, that is quite important. So if you are mining FPPS, you don't care much. You, you just get paid to the maximum of your potential. But if you are mining PPLNS, you actually have to kind of audit your pool or keep them accountable on the, on the blocks that they mine, right? Because you get paid on that event. So mostly, I mean, it is a lot more important for PPLNS pool to actually have one unique static address that every block is mined into that address. I mean, the Coinbase transaction of that block. So it will help them to show transparency to their users and show authenticity that, hey, this is what we earned and this is how we are going to distribute that. Okay. All right. So it's a transparency thing to the users. Do you see that that could change in the future if this thumb does come down and that people will start to adjust the the way that they work because something that I've wondered for a while is well if this pressure comes down on the pools then do people have to start considering solo mining but then obviously that's a huge risk in terms of you could mine for a very very long time especially if you're a small operation without actually ever earning any sats so do you think that that trend to be as transparent as people are being is something that will continue and is someone like me just being paranoid, thinking that there's going to be this pressure? Like, what's your view on the, the way that it's going? Do you not sort of think that this pressure is going to be coming down? Uh, I think sooner or later that's going to happen. So we have these regulators in every country who will find out at some point that they can actually regulate that block creation process, right? Right. There are some solutions for it. For example, a stratum V2 uh, that enables miners to build their own blocks. But again, that block template should be approved by the pool. So again, there is there is some sort of risk involved here that could cause censorship or let's say traceability or whatever. There might be other ideas out there. For example, putting mining pools on DAOs or DAOs of DAOs, I mean, decentralized autonomous organizations who are Mm -hmm. not ran by people, but we are too early on on that side. So Mm -hmm. soon we might see similar solutions pop up, such as like smart contracts over lightning who actually manage a mining pool. That's Mm. that's a possibility. Okay, so so say for you, your organization, you spun up a pool pretty quickly. I mean, sure, you have a great team and, and you're well-educated and hardworking and you spun up that pool, but you're part of a bigger consortium of pools. Wouldn't the bigger consortium be the focus of attack rather than the small pools? Like you, you could just leave that consortium and spin something. Or you, you can just kind of uh, get rid of Linkcoin pool, spin something else up and join that consortium again. But if that consortium... Yep is the one that's compromised. How do we deal with that? And what do you mean by compromise? I guess uh, compromised by the state. You know, like I said, the regulators will be coming down on pool operators and attempting to audit them for more information. So ma- many scenarios could happen around mining pools in terms of regulation. As I said, soon or later, we might see that happen by regulators. For example, we are a Canadian company. The Canadian regulator might set rules at some point on our on our operation. And we have to comply. I mean, there is no way around it. But unless we have a DAO or a DAO of DAOs who actually run the mining pools, that, that's a big possibility in maybe five to 10 years. But something else that, that I foresee I, I predict to happen is that we will see pools affiliated with different countries for example we will see one eastern mining pool one western mining pool who comply with their own regulations for example the u.s might set sanctions on russia or like eastern countries china whatever and they will do the same back and they will kind of ask their mining pools to block transactions of the other side Mm-hmm. And we can see 
a hash rate war happening over there with like people mm -hmm. or, or the governments could potentially like say that, hey, we need more hash rate in order to mine more blocks and kind of process our, our desired transactions in those blocks. So these are things that could happen. Uh, but but again, that, that scenario of, of getting the power of mining out of people and companies and giving that to smart contracts and decentralized autonomous organizations, that could be an exciting scenario. One thing I kind of said in, in like the, the what is a pleb miner thing that launched out pleb miner month was that us small scale miners and home miners are, are the stalwarts of, of the Bitcoin network. At any time, we could go to solo mining, though there'd be a, an extremely low chance of us finding a block. So perhaps us together under these smart contracts, which that's not something I, I know very much about, um, just thinking of ideas that how we can kind of band together the pleb miners to defend the network, to defend this kind of uh, city state type of mining pools. So I think pleb miners are play play a very important role in the network. I think these large publicly traded miners with like hundreds of megawatts of power, they are unhealthy for the network. They can cause a lot of issues and we think decentralization is critical and it is now time to actually act uh, on, on, on making the network more decentralized. And plebs are the people who are actually doing, doing or playing a big role in decentralization. Yeah, I agree. It just seems fairly obvious that these companies are getting bigger and bigger and they're the first places that governments are going to go and knock on their door and they're the people who will comply and that's what i love about the plebs is they won't comply it's what makes me feel confident with bitcoin is that there are these people who are here not just for the money but for real change and they're not going to back down i wondered like seeing everything that you're doing here and the amount of innovation you guys have why are you doing what you're doing and what is it that bitcoin means to you well uh Everybody have had their journey in, in Bitcoin, right? So you start with some, some ignorance, then you have some doubts, then you start believing in the protocol and in the future. So we, are, we have had the same journey. So, well, again, as I told you, I got to know Bitcoin in 2015. And uh, every day that it passes, I, I see more and more values coming mm. coming out of this technology and uh, the way that proof of work is actually helping us make it making it more democratic and more decentralized is is unique and critical and well that's that's the same thing for us I mean as you said uh, as you asked what does it mean to us it means that we we, we see ourselves on a mission to build the infrastructure for the future of the world, for the Web5 world, as they call it, where the money, identity, and any, any sort of asset is being transacted over layer one of Bitcoin. There are many layers. Many layers are going to be built on top of it. But we are on a mission to build and maintain layer one for the future of the world. And potentially for a for for an interplanetary like money exchange right or exchange of value or medium of exchange how much have you dug into that it's something i've heard spoken about a little bit and some people have said about potential latency and issues and whether it's possible what are your thoughts on the interplanetary stuff if we do end up on mars or well we have a limiting factor here which is the speed of light right mm -hmm. so we can't we can move faster than light, and uh, I'm I'm not sure about the number, but it probably takes more than ten minutes to send something from Earth to Mars, or it might be close to that that similar like number. So, layer two and layer three will play a huge role in that new organization or that new setup that we will have as an inter interplanetary species. Lightning would be probably the main method of, of exchanging assets. And we will have a lot of settlement transactions on layer one. 
which is the slower layer in order to process and settle those, those transactions. So it, it, it might take more than 10 minutes for people on other planets to actually see their transaction has settled. Well, that's okay. We were used to that for a long time here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can see why it's so important for a lot of Bitcoiners to be flat earthers, because <laughs> <laughs> there is actually quite a, a large well, number. There are a large number of flat earthers in the Bitcoin community. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> All right. I, my mind was going to go in a lot of different directions there. Hey, Matty, when, when we first started uh, talking, when Max screwed up the first launch of the pod, as usual, you were talking about how you've kind of uh, designed Linkcoin Pool to be like a North American mining pool, but you come to find out that there's so many people all over the world mining on that pool. Can you kind of talk about that journey? Sure thing. Yeah. The, when we started building the product, our, our vision and our goal was to serve North American Bitcoin miners. I mean, US, Canada, or potentially like Mexico. Uh, so... We build a product and you see it, it's the only language that we support is English right now. But the moment that we launched a platform, we saw that, hey, people are actually joining from all around the world. And at the time, we only had two servers, one in Toronto, one in San Francisco. And one user was asking us, hey, I'm, I'm connecting to your pool from New Zealand. Do you guys have a server for me? And I said, oh, my God, <laughs> that's something that we had never planned for. And we started adding, adding more and more servers, one in Europe one in South America, one in Australia. And uh, we, we saw we saw the, the community grow. We saw miners joining us from all over the world, from Paraguay, from Venezuela, from Mexico, from New Zealand, Australia, US and Canada for sure, even even from Europe with, with all, all the issues that they have for sourcing energy these days. But we also see European miners are actually joining Lincoln Pool. So we we think that this is an international product. We are building something for the entire world, and that makes our responsibility kind of kind of more. So we we feel the weight on our shoulders that hey we are we are playing playing a role. A lot of people are relying on us, and we have to build a better product and more reliable infrastructure. Isn't that kind of always the way it happens in Bitcoin? I, you know, before I kind of got into this space, I didn't have any international friends, and now I do. It's just so easy to 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 meet people throughout the Bitcoin space, whether they're miners or whether they're privacy guys or kind of devs. It's almost like you should have just expected it that it was going to be a global movement in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. glad you guys are lean enough to where you can make those adjustments and get some EU servers or get some servers in New Zealand. And is that kind of how you how you distinguish yourself from a lot of the other pools? Like, sure, the technology is, is a little bit different. The pay, payouts are a little bit different. Uh, Body McBot face is neat. You guys got some worker management tools. But as with any successful business, it's the people that do it. Um, would you like to talk about your team or talk about the guys that surround you, guys and gals that surround you that kind of make Lincoin Pool special? Sure thing, yeah. I mean... We believe the culture is super important in any team. The way that you deal with situations, problems happen in any team, on any team. But it's it's all about how you actually deal with them. Whether it's it's an internal issue or that's that's an issue with your users, with your product. So we were lucky enough to have the right culture on our team. And uh, Mustafa and I, we have been friends since 2010. We have survived for many years. I mean, our friendship have survived. And uh, that's that's something that has helped us a lot. So we know how to solve problems together. And as you said, we are lean enough and we are committed enough to build and keep building 24-7 while working together in harmony. So this is, this is important. I mean, no one is saying that, hey, my quota is full. I'm not going to work anymore. This is what it is. We are we are literally working twenty four seven to build the best product in the industry, and it shows. Um, you've obviously built a culture and a team there, like you said, of, of harmony, and everybody's willing to put forth their hundred percent effort twenty four seven, and it shows. And we really appreciate you coming to stop by Pleb Minor Month and describe Lincoln Pool to all the plebs. It's important that we have 
paying him payouts and you guys were kind of leading the way there. But I hope during this conversation that everybody gets to see the, the value out there for Link Coin Pool or, and for pleb miners or small scale miners. And it, it shows to me. So Mehdi, I, I really appreciate what you've built. I appreciate the hard work that you put into your product. And thanks for stopping by Pleb Miner Month. Uh, talk to Max and I. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks, John. Thanks, Max. And thanks to everybody who are listening to this. And we are very excited about the future and how we could contribute to this industry and to this to this movement. Yeah, thanks, Mehdi. And uh, let's keep the conversation going. I'd love to see what you guys are doing and uh, keep in contact. So thanks for taking the time and I look forward to speaking to you soon. Sure thing, anytime. Thanks for listening. Make sure to go to ungovernablemisfits.com to check out the whole month of Pleb Minor Month. We have all the content, all the articles and everything else on there. Make sure to check out the prizes. We have some incredible prizes coming up, including miners, merch, seed signers, foundation devices, passports, and much, much more.